welcome to the grand episode 50 of just one more topic. My God. <laughs> 50 episodes. Oh, 50. It feels five, like 5,000. 5 oh. oh, wait, no, it'll be 5 oh. You die. Still haven't adjusted to that quite. I'm going to get my cop outfit. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to do something a little different this week. We're actually going to do a, uh, a mailbag episode. We've gotten some yeah. good questions, and we want to discuss them. Yeah, we have been doing this for a couple episodes now, and we've gained a little bit of a, I guess, community, you would say. So, thank you, dear viewers, for helping give us ideas. Yes. Uh, first question for episode 50 comes from Twinned Scarab. Man. Oh, and I like this. We all too often talk about video games, yeah. and it's nice to get a question about something else. Twin Scarab asks, what is your favorite edition of Dungeons & Dragons? For me, I got started with what, it, it's technically five, but I guess the beta name was D&D Next. And I uh, started that about a year ago with you and Cedric and- Cedric you know, the Butcher. Yeah, his triumphant return was extra life yeah, extra life which i think was around like episode 30 something so yeah man it's been a while but yeah i would say for me i well i'm, I'm playing more 3.5 now because of uh, because of the monday group that we got going on here at pj gamers so i don't know there's there's pros and pros and cons to both of them i think i really like next more than 3.5 just because it's a little bit easier to get into, especially, you know, it it isn't as convoluted. Like, I've seen the character sheets between 3.5 and 5, and 5 just streamlines and makes everything nice and clear. And that's very true. I have been playing Dungeons & Dragons for a very long time. He's uh, actually 70 years old. Yes, because that's when it was invented. Read a book. Uh... He, uh, you are absolutely correct. Fifth edition is by far the easiest system I have seen to introduce new people to playing it. Uh, we, we've gotten tons of new people since we've been playing it up here, and, and it is a fantastic edition. It is in beta, so certain things like the bestiary is really weak. The character, characters, characters wow. are Emphasis. like uh, in many ways they're stupid, overpowered. Uh, there's not as many restrictions like paladins. You know, you would think, okay, you lawful good alignment. No, they have things for that. Somebody made a kinder paladin. That was also gender confused. Yes, there were many wrong things, but I allowed it. I could get into that maybe some other time. Um, multiple personality disorder. Second edition is probably what I have played the absolute most of. It's what I grew up on, played it to death. I uh, didn't touch much. Uh, of course, first edition, that's a classic. It's fun. Uh, didn't do a whole lot with 3.5 and Pathfinder. Uh, played with it, you know, did, did some games and stuff, uh, but we always ended up going back to second. Uh, fourth edition, I'm sorry, I'm one of those people, I thought it was ridiculous. Uh, I can see where it would be fun. Um, I've been enjoying fifth. Man, I do not have an answer for that. It, it depends yeah. on what I want to do. Uh, if I want... Okay, if I want as in-depth and as many options as I can possibly have while still making a good, well-rounded experience... I will probably end up going with 3.5. Um, I could go second edition, but man, that, that, that edition is brutal. It fucking hates you. Um, Would you say it's kind of the Dark Souls of the D&D in, in, in many ways, uh, yeah, it is. I, I have been enjoying running games for fifth edition, though. I get to do just so much goofy stuff that it is a game again. It's fun. It's exciting. Uh, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little... I don't know there. Uh, but, you know, that is a great question. It is nice to yeah. talk about some of these other yeah. things. Come on down to the store sometime. We love to play. If you've never played, we'll show you how to. If you're an experienced player and just looking to have a good time, bring it. Yeah. Uh, we also, uh, this is probably a good time for a plug, have a, we're doing a fifth edition dual arena. Uh, oh. On February 22nd, it's going to be a bat. Basically, it's five bucks a character. There's a split pot. There's some rules we're going to throw out there, but uh, essentially one-on-one -on -one battles and winner takes all. All right. Let's see. Uh, yes. Go ahead, sir. Well, and if you are interested, there's groups that play 3.5. There's, there's a group that plays Pathfinder, and there's you know several groups that play Next or 5. So easy to just kind of come in and kind of get a feel for each one. Uh, the next one comes from Wyatatas. Uh Give me both your guys' opinions on the top five Final Fantasy games. 
Well. Get your umbrella. Someone's about to have a word vomit. <clears throat> well, it, it's very in, uh, easily my top two. Number one is Final Fantasy X, and number two is Final Fantasy VIII. Now, from there, it gets a little more hazy, but I would probably say number three on my list would be Final Fantasy VI, our, our Final Fantasy VI, which finally got clear, you know, clarified with you know, the compilations that were released on the original PlayStation. Um, from there, probably Final Fantasy IV in fourth spot, and then as far as the fifth, hmm. I'd say Final Fantasy XII. That was very restrained. I'm impressed, sir. And my least favorite is Final Fantasy XIII. Three. Lightning Returns. Because seriously, to hell with that demo. <laughs> uh, different topic. Different yeah. topic. Uh, okay, my top five games. Uh, our three, Super Nintendo 3, when it came out, it was called Final Fantasy III. That's the one I'm talking about. Because uh, it's 3, 6, 12, 89. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, our Final Fantasy III, 7... Mm. Tactics. It's good. Seven is good. It's <laughs> a lot of this is nostalgia for me as well, though. So three, seven, tactics. I'll go ten for my fourth, because ten is banging. Uh, and Boy, then yeah. the original, the very first one. Yeah. Which I would definitely give give props to the original because it it without it there wouldn't have been a ten. You know, I remember going to summer camp and. Uh, we were, we were gone for three to four weeks at a time at this thing, and uh, my it was my first year there. Uh, I, uh, we, we, had to, we were on this uh, uh, competitive uh, canoeing team. It was called War Canoe. It was one of the big things. This whole, we're in Oklahoma. It was down in Texas. It had this whole Indian vibe. Uh, and so the team had to run, you know, two miles a day. Well, we, we had this one particular fellow, a great kid. His name was Denny. He was a little heftier. Running wasn't his thing, so I would hang back and, you know, jog along with him but the way I got him through it to keep his mind off what he was having to run was we actually talked our entire very the very first Final Fantasy game we would tell each other the stories of our very first playthroughs and man he had it it got him going it he had it down pat he had every move he made throughout the entire game that he was able to just recite while we're sitting there running and I mean and we would talk talk shop like that for several days till he started getting used to it and could do it more huh Wow, that was a fun memory. I, I, thank you, Wyatt Tatas. You just brought back a good memory. Uh, mm -hmm. Another Wyatt Tatas question. Do you think that The Elder Scrolls Online is worth the investment? Hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. It's got a lot of hype, and it is cool. Nobody is unseated. Wow. Nobody wants to pay $15 a month that none of their friends are playing. It'll probably go a bit, but Star Wars tried the same thing, and guess what? It went free to play in under six months. Yeah, for me, my biggest issue with any MMO that, that decides to have a subscription, whether monthly or you know, in chunks or packages or whatever, is the fact that at some point, it starts becoming a chore versus just enjoying the game. So it's like, well, and I have to play this game mm -hmm. because I'm already, I'm already paying for well, it. Well, and MMOs are built around that psychology. It's less about having fun and more about how do we get you addicted. Farmville used the same thing. Shit, original WoW was like having a job. You had to grind all week long just to make the money so you could go on raids on the weekends. But again, the big thing about this is what are your friends playing? An MMO will, will subsist if enough people are playing it. Well, that's what all my friends are doing. That's where the content is. So many have tried and failed. And Elder Scrolls Online looks awesome. I was very skeptical of it incredibly and it looks really good the beta has been a lot of fun um it's man it's just i don't think i mean when star wars a name like star wars cannot do it i just doubt that elder scrolls can yeah the elder scrolls the entire universe of elder scrolls is fantastic it's yeah. a great series it is one of the the greatest just drop you into a game into a game world, make it believable and have and allow you to do what you want. Elder Scrolls Online has the potential. It does. But we'll see. I'm going to reserve further judgment till it actually hits release. I want to see the final product. Yeah. Well, we are about out of time for our glorious episode 50. I would like to say, yeah. S. Vance, on Facebook, you asked us an amazing question to go along with our last episode 
uh, our, our Gears review talking about yes. Epic, or the name Gears of War. And I want you to know, that question inspired us and shot off such a conversation amongst all of us that it is actually going to spearhead our new business-specific discussion show next week. Yes. So, thank you. Congrats. And I am Tridracius. And I'm Taborius. We didn't introduce ourselves, did we? Nope, we just dove right in. Damn. Time, time flew by. Good questions, great topics. We will see you all next week, twice Oh, next wait, week. if you're in England, that, that, that's a... Yeah, yeah, we will talk to you all later.